Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I'm back with another channeled infamous celebrity missing person video. Now I'm speaking about a woman who hasn't been seen in public since August of 2007 when she attended her father's funeral under supervision of handlers from her husband's very controversial, very charismatic, very cult-like tax-exempt church. I'm talking about the church of you know what in California. Anyway, this woman has not been seen. I'm speaking about Michelle Diane Barnett, otherwise known as Shelley Miscavige, born January 18th, 1961. She'd be approaching her 60th birthday right here, right now, and nobody has heard from her. This was brought to the public's attention during the marriage of Tom Cruise to Katie Holmes. When Leah Remily opened her mouth, thank God she did, and asked where her friend was at this this basically royal wedding of two of the upper echelon in her husband's church. Now, Shelley joined the Church of Scientology with her parents' blessing at the age of 12. She was basically enrolled into the church and began her patronage through learning, following the steps, doing the rules, focusing her energy, very, very efficient, becoming invaluable in her knowledge and ability and working her way up through the church. Now keep in mind, her family had also been in the church. A very odd thing had happened to Shelley's mother in 1985. 1982, a 21-year-old Shelley married a 22-year-old David Miscavige, who became the self-appointed CEO after the death of L. Ron Hubbard to the Church of Scientology. Shelley's mother, I think her nickname was Flo, she died at the age of 52 in 1985, but she died in odd circumstances. Well, they're not so odd now, and if you just read the story peripherally, you might have thought she did actually commit suicide, but when you read the story, um, Shelley's mother basically shot herself three times with a shotgun and then did herself off with a fourth shot to the head. Now, is it just me? Or if I shot myself once, even accidentally with a shotgun, I think it would hurt like hell. I wouldn't go ahead and continue to shoot. Most people's bare, just, just life instinct to preserve themselves through not having to go through pain would stop them from repeating that three more times and then offing themselves on the fourth time. Somehow, Shelley's mother ended up dead and they actually called it on the coroner's certificate a suicide, which is complete and utter nonsense when you read it. Anyway, Shelley Miscavige basically has been not heard from, not seen from, and not anywhere in public since August of 2007. And here's the important thing I wanted to get across with this. If it were you, if it were me, if it were anybody else, we would be looked into by what they call the officials, for example, the LAPD. Now the LAPD has said, we know she's okay. We talk to people within the church ranks that say she's in seclusion. She wants her privacy. She doesn't want to be a celebrity. Okay, fine. Why not at least do a tape recording? Why not come on, you know, a Zoom Skype, whatever, and tell the public that you're okay? Because it's very odd for somebody not to be seen at their husband's side when they've been seen 24-7 her entire adult life. Since the age of 21 and prior to that, she has been glued to her husband's side as his right-hand woman, confidant, his assistant in every way possible. And I'm gonna use the word assistant, I don't know what else to call her, but the person who did all of the business that he couldn't attend to. So he was his right arm, she was his left arm. Where is this woman? So I started to focus on the energy and I, I just basically started to go for a run and ask the information to come through to me in whatever way it could. And here is what I got. 
about four years prior to Shelley not being seen or heard from in public, 2007, so we're talking 2003, I see Shelley going about her daily business. She was very much a type A personality that loved to do a lot of things and facilitate meetings and conversations with high profile people within the church. She loved the context. She loved the sale of selling the church system or belief system to these celebrities. And she was like the customer service diplomatic liaison. She came in to seal the deal. She had brains. She had beauty. She was charming. She was engaging, but she was a no-nonsense businesswoman. She also very much believed in everything she was doing. This is what I picked up from the energy is that she literally believed in what she was doing. So when I looked into the energy, I saw four years prior to her going missing, her not being seen, going into seclusion, I saw her in an office and I saw her wearing a skirt and I saw her talking to a very raven haired brunette woman. I think Shelly had like medium brown hair, but this woman was dark raven haired, like raisin colored hair. And I saw the woman come into her office or the space that they were in an office with a whole stack of papers and she kind of put them on a desk. She put the papers down and she said, have you seen this? I see Shelly looking and I see her furiously looking through these papers, moving, 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 moving the papers like this, moving, moving, moving. And I see her scanning down until she sees what she's looking for. She reminds me of an accountant who's looking for numbers in financials to see what this is and she's matching it up to another paper. Suddenly she pushes back from the desk and she looks at the woman and says, does he know about this? Does he know about this? I don't know what they're talking about. I kind of just can hear an odd conversation off to the side. Just as suddenly as I'm seeing that, my mind is going to the right side and I'm opening up a door, figuratively, in my head. I'm opening up a door and I walk into a completely different atmosphere in a completely different area and I see just this old man sitting in a bed and he's telling me, he's dead, but he's telling me I didn't die naturally. They put their hand over my mouth and they shut me up. I didn't die naturally. I did not die of natural causes. I don't know who this old man is. It doesn't occur to me at the time who he is. The door suddenly shuts. I go back over here and I see Shelly's husband. I see him go from one part of the side of my head. Like it's, it's like I'm seeing a movie screen. I see him go from one side to the other side. On this side, he's dressed as a young kid. He does have a uniform on, but he's kind of like a young kid. On this side, he steps out like he's a presidential candidate and I see him, his shoes are polished. He's got his collar exactly. His pants are tailored perfectly. He steps out and he steps out like he's running for Congress, like he's a, he's a politician. He's going out there. He's, he's revving up the people. They're listening to him. He's loving it. I go back over here to the old man in the bed and I get the impression that the old man in the bed was taken out so the new young man could take over this man's position. I'm like, holy shit, I think I'm talking about L. Ron Hubbard over here. I don't think he died of what they said he did. What did he die at age 76? I think they said pancreatic something probably pancreatic or cancer or pancreatitis and something to do with like blood clots and or stroke something like this I can't really remember but it was one of those two things no his breath stopped just breathe interesting concept right now this man had the same problem back then when he passed away literally passed away just stopped breathing, not of his own volition though. It wasn't his body that stopped. He had a few more years in him. He had about three more years. He wasn't going to die, but he'd grown bored anyway is what I'm seeing. He'd grown bored. Now, when you look at the founder of this particular church, okay, which did receive its tax exempt status, which makes it quote legit. That's how messed up we are as a society when we put religion into a tax exempt status, which makes you know it's a corrupt man-made concept because there should be no tax exempt status for a religion that collects hundreds of thousands of dollars and makes its, its people sign contracts into perpetuity 
for a billion years based on the concept that we reincarnate back in and out of our lifetimes and you will owe them servitude through each and every lifetime which really is a magical bonding ritual okay so keep that in mind this is a magical bonding ritual it binds you to the energies in this life if you sign it even mistakenly so you have agreed to the contract that's why you have to really watch what you sign into perpetuity into a billion years who signs shit like that shut up no how about this no not happening so these churches especially this particular controversial celebrity funded celebrity focused high high profile church of wielding their power and their fear all over the place this church was founded by one L. Ron Hubbard, who was the roommate of one Aleister Crowley, who also shared a room with one Jack Parsons of the Jet Propulsion Lab. Aleister Crowley, the Golden Dawn, the wickedest man on the planet, a confirmed pedophile and Satanist, Luciferian, Babylonian ritual, magic manifester, sex magic ritualist, this man, along with L. Ron Hubbard, founded, and Jack Parsons, founded their belief systems for their three individual pursuits in life on the belief through sexual magic, through the orgasm, through the heightened state of orgasm, when the universe opens up its energy because you are basically disconnected in pleasure form to everything universally and you are not focused on the mundane it allowed energies to manifest in front of you so they focus ritual magic sexual acts in order to bring their ten intentions about so we have l ron hubbard who created a church now just listen to this i find this fascinating who created a church based on the foundation of his science fiction writing, I'm not necessarily opposed to his science fiction writing, I do believe there's aliens, but science fiction writing, the communication with aliens, the extraction of personal private information on every level in order to clear your soul, to elevate you. Meanwhile, we have books and volumes and tapes of blackmail information anybody with any kind of shame or any kind of secret or any kind of uh you know indiscretion who's spoken about it we've we've got these tapes now and we can blackmail you think about that for a second also an organization that leah remily describes as turning people and members against each other with a form of writing them up kind of like a prefect in private school where a hall monitor prefect writes up what you've done when you run down the halls when you skip class when you go out so this organization is run in a way where a hierarchy is in control of the information from your soul that you've done in your life and should you have done anything you're not proud of this information is kept logged and filed now you can be damn sure people like john travolta and tom cruise have so much information over here that that information can be used to keep them in the organization force them to speak in a certain way get them to do things bring in their friends do whatever it is they need to do so it's a little bit of a pyramid extortion belief system i guess is what i want to say now that i know that l ron hubbard didn't take his own breath of his own volition okay and i see l ron hubbard this is what i see on the day that he died i can see him in his bed i literally can see him in his bed looking out the window bored to death with everything i can see him contemplating but he wasn't ready to die quite then when he when the breath is taken from him somebody smothered him covered his mouth covered his breath is what i'm seeing okay so basically smothered him suffocated him i am seeing him fly right out of his body onto the ceiling and looking down he sees three men cleaning up the bed around his body he sees this he knows this he knows this at that exact moment he sees and looks into the eyes i'm assuming he means on some kind of a spiritual level when a person feels something around them he looks into the eyes of his assistant of the young boy turned man turned confidant that he let 
into every private area of his life. Isn't that ironic that he let this man into his life to know everything about him privately so that this man could take the tactics of the church that the other men had started and use it against him and then take him out and take over. This is what I'm getting. I really do get this. Now, at the time that this founder of the church died, there was a lot of controversy within the church. Tax money, um, abuses going on with children in the church, abuses with church members, kidnappings, extortion, you know, brutality, abuses, etc. And the LAPD was rumored to have been in their right hand pocket. Now, here's what I get with Shelley. Shelley is very kind of ADD like focused on doing well. She's focused. She's strong-willed. She's coming into her own as a woman. Four years prior to her never being heard from again, she starts to go through paperwork and find out what the organization that she's given her entire life to is really doing to earn their money. That is what I'm hearing to say. Now, it's interesting because it's been very hush-hush. This is what I'm being told. It's been very hush-hush. This particular very controversial organization has been taking shipping containers. This is what I'm seeing a receipt for. Shipping, packing containers, big, huge boxes that they have at the Port of Los Angeles. Big, huge boxes, shipping containers, and shipping things that breathe in these shipping containers out of the port of Los Angeles. What do I mean by things that breathe? Do I mean exotic animals? Do I mean bunny rabbits? No, I'm talking people. Little people and big people are being shipped to different locations. This is what they're doing in the 80s underneath, undercurrent. They are shipping people out of Los Angeles to other destinations. And I'm seeing money being counted up like this. I'm seeing like a guy at a gambling table with a thing on his head, counting up money, boom, 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 boom. Counting up money, machines, machines, counting up this money. The people are being shipped out in different directions. I do not believe that Shelly knew. Now, four years prior to this happening was the first time to her knowledge that she actually caught her husband with somebody else. I'm talking in a romantic or sexual or lustful sense. She had not caught him before. I'm not saying that he was ever faithful or not. I don't know that, but I do know around 2003, 2004, I am feeling like she actually saw firsthand what her husband was doing. Now, at first, this devastated her devastated her and when she asked him she was smacked back so there was physical violence I don't think he punched her in the face but it was a backhand to the face how can you ask that backhand where she fell on the floor she was learning how not to ask these questions by the way that this man treated her but she still kept an eye on what he was doing she kind of backed down a bit and continued to do her function as basically a managerial right hand important hand person to her husband basically he's running a huge organization and she's the woman behind the power doing all of the work hiring the people hiring the assistants this is what she's doing day in and day out she starts to see more and more information that is showing her what her husband is now she starts to ask questions he basically shuts her down this is what i'm seeing he makes the mistake or she makes the mistake he makes the mistake of telling her, it's okay, I'll deal with it. She makes the mistake of saying, I'm a grown ass woman, I know what's good, I've been at your right hand side, I'm going to orchestrate this. We're going to do this. Now the reason she did it is a du in direct conflict, this is what I'm seeing. The reason she did what she did, and I feel like she changed something within the organization behind his back, but the reason she did this was to stop the shipping containers from leaving Los Angeles. Her motive was to stop those containers from leaving and ending up at their destination. So basically, she cock blocked or threw a monkey wrench into the trafficking of breathing, living human beings going out of the port of Los Angeles to somewhere different. This is just the information I'm getting allegedly from my psychic mind, okay? This is what I'm seeing. This is going on. There's about eight people in the background that know. Her husband 
constantly walks around with two goons or bodyguards and these are his mafia bodyguards. Basically, he's running a mafia organization, for lack of a better word. So I'm asking, where is Shelly? They're not really... She's Shelley. not dead, and she's somewhere locked away. But she's been cryoed or frozen. It's like dry ice. I see the container. I'm assuming they put her in the container just to shut her up. But when I'm looking at her... She's in a block of ice. I can see her hair. I can see what she's wearing. I can see her in the ice. She's frozen in time. So this controversial church leader's wife, according to what I'm picking up, is frozen in time from 2007. I do not believe that she's able to show up for a wellness visit. I don't believe she's able to talk to anybody. She's frozen in time. She did discover trafficking through the church. This is just what I'm getting. She did discover it. She spoke it. She was analyzing paperwork and gathering information for her own purposes to fight her husband. She was going into battle with her husband. Um, she was given something that made her, um, when you chloroform somebody, when you knock them out, that's what she, she was alive when she went into the ice, either frozen ice in the machine, in the, in the cylinder or literally a block of ice. Now the intention is, the intention is to drop the ice where it can't be found. I'm trying to think where you would do that. I, I'm. I'm confused. I guess you could take her to the Arctic, but you'd have to get the ice onto an airplane, etc., etc. I don't think that's what's going on here. I can tell you, I can tell you that I feel she's on ice. So I feel like she's been put on ice. Like the mafia says, he's on ice. This is what I'm getting. Frozen and put away. So she's been put away something and somewhere away from where people think she would be. She's been hidden, and again, hidden in plain sight, frozen. And that's, that's, really, that's really what I'm getting. But I want you guys to understand something, too. LRH founded his church based on the teachings of Aleister Crowley, uh, um, you know, the occult, Jack Parsons of Jet Propulsion Lab, and Luciferianism. It's a combination. It's Egyptian. It's mysticism, it's Jew Jewish mysticism, it's also Luciferian. And so the church has been, been conjured up to espouse these beliefs in different ways. But I don't think Shelley knew it because she grew up in a family where this is where they went. Just like you go to church, she went to church. So she didn't think anything of it. The doctrine of this church, they just froze the head wife. They just froze her. She's been frozen. She discovered something financially that was making a lot of money for the church through the shipment and the shipping containers leaving Los Angeles for other areas holding people. This is literally what I'm getting. That was the reason for her disappearing. She could not speak it. She could not say it. And that's what I'm getting. Um, that's as much as I'm getting right now. So once again, my name is Sloan from SloanBella.com.